Hi everybody, market failure occurs where the free market fails to allocate scarce resources at the socially optimum level of output. It's crucial that you've watched my previous video on allocative efficiency in a free market before you watch this one, otherwise some of the concepts will be lost on you, especially the idea of the socially optimum level of output, which is crucial for allocative efficiency. So the free market is failing to allocate scarce resources there. There are a variety of reasons as to why this could happen. We're going to cover those here generally, and then we're going to look at specific videos in the remainder of this playlist for you to understand the detail of each specific cause. So let's look. There's a relatively long list here. You need to know all of these things. We start with externalities, negative and positive externalities. So these could be negative impacts on third parties, negative externalities, or positive impacts on third parties as a result of production or consumption. The problem with these is they won't be accounted for in the free market mechanism. Consumers will ignore any impacts on third parties when they consume. Firms will ignore any impacts on third parties when they produce because firms are profit maximizers so they only consider their private costs. Consumers are utility maximizers, they only consider their private benefit. That's self-interest. The fact that they're self-interested here would be an issue if there are external costs or external benefits. Negative externalities, positive externalities. So that's at the heart of the problem here. And in fact, as we go through, everything in red is what's at the heart of the problem, which is why there is potentially a market failure from all of these things. If you look at merit and demerit goods, these are goods or services that are either worse for us than we think or better for us than we think. The problem is we don't fully know just how good or bad these things are. There is imperfect information or in information failure in this case, which might make consumers make irrational decisions when they consume. So that could lead to the allocation of scarce resources being maybe too high or too low, just like uh, what could happen with positive and negative externalities, the allocation of scarce resources being too high or too low. When it comes to public goods, the issue is something called the free rider problem and the notion that firms are profit motivated and there'll be no supply of public goods at the end. So that is a definite source of market failure. Uh, common access resources here. Um, common access resources will often be over-consumed and over-produced and that is again because there are negative externalities in the production. So it kind of comes back to point number one and there'll be over-production, like I said, and over-consumption self-interest at the heart, so private producers ignoring these external costs when it comes to producing. Income inequality can be argued to be a source of market failure on the grounds of equity, inequity in this case. Equity in economics just means fairness. So the problem with income inequality as a source of market failure is that it's going to be someone's opinion as to when income inequality becomes too high in a free market economy or in a free market itself. So inequity here means unfairness. If ever income inequality gets so high that it's deemed to be unfair, it can be argued to be a source of market failure. When there is monopoly power, we assume in a free market there are many buyers and sellers. We assume that there is good information. We assume that there is a low or no barriers to entry and exit. Well, if we break down the idea that there are many sellers, and in fact there is only one dominant seller, if we break down the idea that there are no or low barriers to entry, and we say that there are high barriers to entry, it may give rise to monopoly power, and the end result is that consumers are exploited with higher than socially optimum prices and lower than socially optimum quantities, and we get a market failure there. We also go into more kind of smaller sources, but important ones, like factor immobility. So we assume that when demand shifts right in a market, for example, that suppliers can respond and produce extra output, responding to the incentive to increase price and make more profit, uh, to produce more. But what if they can't? Maybe factors of production are immobile where suppliers can't produce that extra output, and then we're left with a misallocation of resources. Uh, in the labor market, maybe workers are not perfectly mobile. Maybe they are structurally unemployed. They are occupationally immobile. Maybe they're geographically immobile. And that can stop the perfect allocation of labor in the labor market, leading to a market failure there as well. So it's good to note down all these different causes. You need to know each of these causes in real detail as to why it can lead to market failure. So stay tuned for the remainder of the videos in this playlist to get the real detail as to why these causes in green can lead to a market failure, which is the definition in red. I'll see you all in these next videos in the playlist.